We're going to do a demonstration of rolling a shirt that is folded in half. I turn the shirt inside out and then I'm going to pull one sleeve into the other sleeve so that the whole shirt is mirrored. This takes a little while for me because I get kind of fussy about the details, and, but you can probably do it in less time if you aren't quite as picky. Um, so just line up all the seams and then smooth out the fabric. Here we are. And then we're going to start at like the front upper part of the shirt and start rolling it really tight. On this shirt, I did not roll it as tight as I have in previous shirts, and I feel like that was kind of a mistake. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. I thought maybe it was going to make the details bigger if the roll wasn't quite as tight. And while that was true, it ended up kind of not looking as detailed altogether. So if I would do it again, I would still roll it really tight and very neat but just not roll it quite as far as I did in this shirt. So I'm gonna roll it all the way through the sleeve and you're gonna see like both sides of the shirt are gonna roll towards each other. And this is good, this is fine. I would do this again in the future. Um, I think the difference is after that very first tie, I would unroll some of it and then pinch it off and start tying it again. But this was a good experiment just to see what would happen. So um, up to this part, I'd say um, definitely try this. This is good so far. Um, so you can see that top part is getting really close to being like totally rolled. You can't roll it anymore. So um, this is good so far, recommend doing this. And then where that is, um, bent at the top there, I'm going to take some artificial sinew and tie that off. Um, I think the more angled ties you can do, the more interesting results you'll get, more zigzaggy lines. Um, a straight tie will give you less zigzagginess, if that makes sense. So also in previous shirts, I did more um, like angular ties and I think that made for some really interesting results. Um, so here I am unrolling it a little bit but then I roll it back up. <laughs> so um, in the next shirt I'll probably leave it unrolled and continue tying. So at this point everything else that you do after this is totally up to you. This is basically what I wanted to show you in terms of having the um, wave-like mirrored effect on the front of the shirt. Um, anything after this is just experimenting, personal choice, and I just wanted to see what would happen if I tied it all up like this. Um, so I ended up doing a bunch of like straight across ties just to get everything locked down, and then I go back and do some angular ties to add more details. Um, so if I could do it again, I would have done like angled ties uh, for for all of the ties that I did and not do any that are straight across because straight across ties just look like straight lines that go across the shirt and I'm not really interested in that. Like you don't need to do all of this work and folding the shirt just to get lines that go straight across, you know what I mean? So do ties that go at an angle to get more wave-like effects at the very end. So, I'm, and that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just uh, doing some more random ties. And I think that's where the experimentation is going to come in and everybody's shirts are gonna look different because all of these little details that you add, add nuance and interest. Um, so I just keep uh, wrapping it. I wrap it like four or five times and then I pull it as tight as I can and I try not to break the sinew because it's very annoying when it breaks because then it gets stuck in there and it's hard to get out without causing damage to the shirt because I get impatient. So yeah, I just keep adding more ties because I want it to look really detailed. The reason that I use sinew on this is because I'm gonna ice dye it and when I ice dye I have a dry shirt um, often like blues and blacks will fill the lines and then ice will continue washing out those colors and then 
lighter colors can deposit in the spots that are washed out, but the lines still hold the dark colors. So it kind of looks like a reverse dye without having to do those extra steps. Um, so you don't have to use sinew with this method. You can just roll and like put some rubber bands on there and do whatever dye application style you like and not have um, like stark lines on it. So for the bottom of a shirt, I just kind of like fold it over into little nubbies and then tie some lines in there. Again, I wish I hadn't done so many ties that are just straight across because they they end up not being very interesting. Um, but you know, everything is a learning experience and I love posting on social media to document what I've done because I actually do go back and look through my own social media to see what worked and what didn't to when I don't know what to do and then you know I'll grab inspiration from past posts like oh those colors look good or wow that that tying was fun I'm gonna try that again so I encourage you to document your own experiments somewhere even if it's not public facing um I had to start posting on Instagram originally with um like my, the results of my tie-dye because I kept losing it into my phone camera roll uh, okay, so here we are. I have finished putting all these random ties in here. And... Okay, I thought I was done, but apparently I'm, I keep adding more. <laughs> so there it is. That's what it looks like. Okay, I did want to talk about the profile of this, like the form of it. I tried to tie it in a way where it would be like uniform thickness with nothing like sticking up in wonky ways. Because I'm ice dyeing it, I want it to be evenly saturated. So I think this will give it the best chance at even saturation and um, yeah, just easier to put dye and ice on it because it's flat and uniform. Okay, so here's how I have my ice guard set up. I have some foil in there just to take up extra space. And then I added the ice and the dye and the soda ash on top. I did not pre-soak this. It's almost finished melting. I'm very excited. So I've been able to like remove the guard and the foil that was taking up space for the yeah. ice. Um, on the video, that pink looks very fluorescent. I don't think it's going to look bright like that uh, after the shirt is rinsed and washed. But I think it's looking pretty good. There's an even disbursement of the different colors. So there's like grays and blues and greens there and there and then in the middle there's some yellow and pink so I think hopefully that will mean that it's a good like composition on the shirt but we'll see after the ice melts I'm gonna stick it in a plastic bag and then stick the plastic bag into a bin of hot water so I can rinse it after that like speeds up the batch time this side was the top and then this was the bottom okay I'm gonna show you two shirts the one that I did at first and the one that I just did for this video, because um, I'm still experimenting and trying to figure out what changes and folds will result in. So here we go. That was the first one I did, and this is the one that I just did. And the main difference is when I was folding this one, I did it a lot tighter. Uh, I really worked hard to roll really tiny at the beginning and then tight through the entire thing. This one I didn't quite do that because I've noticed on the back of these um, like the biggest part of the roll I don't know how to say that um, the layer that goes around the outside of the roll has the bigger details and so I was trying to get that onto the front and I accidentally did like the opposite thing that I should have done on this one because I rolled it as far as possible all the way to the back so like this really cool detail, I would probably like to just shrink this down onto the front of the shirt and then have something else back here. So yeah, there's that. I think this looks a little wonky. It still looks pretty cool. Um, yeah. The colors on this one I think are really nice on the front, but the details are, there's like not quite as much going on so it's not like a true cosmic egg, but it's still a very fun effect to play with. 
So I might also experiment in the future with like doing something different on this part down. So with this one, you can see the detail. Um, there are a lot more waves in there. So I'm still trying it out. Hopefully this video inspires you to try your own and share what you change and what happens.